Yeah, just a brief uh, introduction to some of the things that we're doing in, uh, in Australia on, on underwater imagery. Um, you've already heard what IMOS is about because uh, Sebastian told you first thing this morning what IMOS was about. Um, and he's going to talk about it again tomorrow, so uh, hopefully you'll listen to that. But today I'm just going to talk about um, one of our facilities in IMOS which measures underwater imagery. Uh, and then bring that together with other elements of imagery which uh, are taking place in, in, within our marine community. Um, so, Amos has this autonomous underwater vehicle. It's been running for uh, seven or eight years now. Um, it's done something over 500 different dives around Australia. It's used now predominantly within marine park structures to actually go back and repeat surveys to look at changes in benthic biodiversity. Each time it goes out, it does something like this, measures a number of stereo images uh, of small quadrants, and then you've got to annotate all of this stuff. So, so we do that with a tool called Squiddle, and that's all done on the desktop. Um, within Squiddle at the moment, we have three different annotation schemes, because nobody can decide on what's the best annotation scheme. Um, or there's a machine learning tool in there, which uh, you can, take a guess at what's going on in the space. But we also have uh, other kinds of imagery, uh, and in particular one of these is called the baited remote underwater video imagery. Uh, and I'm told that currently we're the world leader in, in using this kind of technology. Um, but IMOS is generally looking to support uh, underwater imagery collection and processing uh, across the, the whole platforms in Australia, so, so this is why we're involved. So, as you can see, uh, um, underwater imagery through baited remote vehicles is a highly technical process. Um, you have to, the technology really comes in the fact that you can actually manage to get it to land the right way up on the seabed. Um, but as, as it says, it's just collecting uh, imagery of fish that come to eat um, what you've put down in front of it. Um, so why do you want to do all this processing? Well, because if you, if you want to look at the health of the oceans, you need to know something about fish and ecological metrics. Uh, and you actually need to be able to do this in a standardized way. So in Australia, at the moment, most of the stereo image annotation of this kind of measurement is done with a tool called Event Measure. And that creates kind of a, a data output collection for the stereo processing. But there are other ways in which you can do image annotation, of course, using different, different tools. Um, as we've heard already, from Catherine, then analysis is a desktop job, it's a, it's a time consuming activity. Uh, here we've got a picture of uh, YC from the uh, Fiji Wildlife Conservation Society about to get started. <coughs> the thing about all of this is it takes, as, as Catherine said, about 20 hours to do an hour's worth of video, so it, it's a very intensive labour thing. And the, the downside, of course, is this all gets stuck eventually, it, basically, it's just left under the desk. It never gets beyond. That, that process, so other people don't get the opportunity to, to explore those videos or look for other things in, in the information that's been collected. And, and as I said at the beginning, of just about, about the ABZ, then imagery is fast becoming the tool of choice for state of environment reporting in Australia uh, because it's cheap, it's fast, uh, and you can go back and you can, the instrumentation is quite cheap to buy. Um, uh, uh, and. But the problem you've got, of course, is that video can be classified, I suppose, as big data. It's got a laborious workflow, uh, and it's mostly done on the desktop. And because it's on the desktop, then sharing of this information is quite difficult. So we're looking at how we can use the cloud to improve and address this process. So in Australia, as Dick mentioned at the beginning, then we've been running a research data cloud in Australia for, for a number of two or three years now. Um, and part of that is a marine component, uh, and um, we've started the process of standing up the couple of tools, uh, the Squiddle tool, um, a, a tool called Global Archive, uh, and trying to look at how we build a repository of, of underwater imagery that's online, which can be used by these tools to, to further annotation processes. Um, one of the tools, as I said, is Squiddle, and this is the one we use for underwater still imagery at the moment. It's in development for um, uh, video imagery as well, um, but it's, it allows, enables you to have flexible data storage, doesn't matter where it is, uh, it can be online or it can be on your desk. 
um, different annotation schemes that we're building into this process. Uh, as we said at the beginning, we've got three, three different annotation schemes already and a, a machine learning uh, component in there as well. It enables you to share easily uh, through collaborative projects uh, different um, components of it, to look at different automated algorithms uh, to, to speed up the processing. Uh, and each, each component is really kind of like a media object of annotation. Uh, it can be done in images or it can be videos. It can be, can be whatever you like in that space. The other tool that we're putting, to, putting up in space is this thing called the Global Archive. And Global Archive is a, is a repository of standardized annotation from underwater imagery. Uh, and it's, it, it's agnostic. It doesn't care what kind of imagery, what kind of analysis you've done. Uh, and I think it's the, the problem that in this space is generally there are no real standards for, 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 for this uh, annotation process. So, so what, what, what Global Archive tries to do is then to, to massage uh, a disparate set of annotations into, into some sort of standardised uh, format. Um, at the moment, it's, uh, uh, it's a worldwide thing, that's why it's called Global. And um, it's working with a number of other organisations uh, around the world, particularly looking at how you can bring together different collections of baited remote underwater videos uh, in, into a single, single one-stop shop. <laughs> um, so what we've been trying to do is put, put this in the cloud. Uh, and so, so we've been sort of establishing a, a, a repository space uh, which, which we'll, we have, we'll see in a minute, a, a specialised tool for uh, syncing and uploading information into the space, which then allows you to use either Squiddle or, or this event measure tool to do the fish annotation side of stuff. All these annotations then merge into, get merged into Global Archive, and then you've got a standardised set of information from which you can start to do <laughs> analytics and produce some state of the report, uh, environment reporting. And this project's been running for a year now, and it's due to finish uh, very sh at the end of this year, uh, at which point we, we, we're looking to have a, a, a reasonable prototype service uh, of uploading information, being able to use that information online to, to annotate and, and produce uh, output metrics. So uh, in a nutshell, um, we've got a set of users on the left who can upload information using a data sync tool. Um, this, this data sync tool um, extracts the metadata from, from, the, from the uploaded information, uh, stores that somewhere, you know, probably in the AODN catalog, uh, so that the people are, you can discover that uh, imagery. Um, we, we then have the annotation files that get fed into Global Archive. There's a, there's a, a validation process to ensure that, um, that all the information is correct that's going in. Uh, and then you can generate through Global Archive a set of summaries of the data. So you can start to compare uh, surveys in different parts of Australia or repeat surveys at the same place to actually export some um, reporting. As I said, the data sync tool is quite an important component of this because generally speaking people are, are doing the annotations uh, and the video and, and so you want to make sure that there's, there's strong connections between that, that kind of, the, the, the two sets of information that you've got. You may not have done the annotations yet, so you may just want to upload the video so that it can be done through the, through the cloud processing service. So, so if in a nutshell, I guess, so, so the data sync tool enables you to organize your data, uh, select files on the local computer to actually upload. Uh, you could go through the process of creating metadata using a standardized tool within the, the, the tool. And there's some validation process that goes on to ensure that uh, the files and the imagery are related and you can identify that relationship. And, and then you can sync the annotations up into Global Archive and you can put the imagery in the repository so, so that the two then uh, are, are, are linked through, through the metadata. So as an example of, of this, then um, using Global Archive then, uh, in February of this year, and then we ran a, a week-long workshop bringing uh, 32 uh, researchers together from six different agent, government agencies and six universities. Uh, and they looked at uh, about 80% of the available annotation analyses that are available in Australia, sort of representing an investment that's a, a reasonable sum of money. 
And um, so it ended up with 20,000 deployments, and from those 20,000 deployments in the week, they were able to identify nearly 2,000 species, 2.5 million individual fish, and 600,000 length measurements from the tools that we've put together. Which then enables you to do something like producing some statistics about what there is. So the, the, the outputs from this workshop then were things like uh, species richness around Australia, um, looking at different distributions of different uh, creatures that are identified within the imagery, uh, and, and, and so on. But then when really what we're wanting to get to put is the point of doing this uh, state of environment reporting, um, because every five years Australia is, is this big program to do, uh, look, look at the state of its marine estate, uh, and its marine estate is massive, Okay, so it's the third largest marine jurisdiction in the world after France and the USA. Uh, so, so there's a, a, a pressure on there. We, we all know about the issues to do with the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, so that's just one of the many issues that it has to deal with. So, so we're looking at how we can use this kind of information to, to further and improve the state and environment reporting in Australia. So once you've got it all in there, you need some analytical tools to get information out. Uh, and so there's been a, we're in the process of building a, a shiny set of uh, tools that can be used either uh, in Jupyter Notebooks or in particular what we've decided to do in our place is to take these tools and actually associate them with the AODN portal so that you can actually plot all these distribution alongside all the other data that the IMOS, uh, have, uh, the AODN and IMOS house. So, so you end up with, from, from the, the collections that we've got already, this 20,000 sets of information, you can it, plot them on a map, obviously, it's a web map service. You can then click on a particular blob, and each blob represents a collection of uh, uh, analyses. And then you can zoom in on a bit, like, like and we overlay. So, so, it, so you know where you are, then we, we're keeping the marine parks in, con, in our context here as being areas at which you need to know something about change. Uh, and then you can use that information then to immediately click on any of these collections, either an individual bunch or a collection of bunches, and, and out pops the set statistics from this R shiny uh, software that's in the back end. Uh, so you can look at, uh, the, the, for example, in this case, the number of species that you've got in a particular uh, marine park region, and you can compare the, the fished regions with the no-take regions and look to see both in space and in time and um, how, how these uh, processes are, are being monitored. And so you think there's all sorts of different statistics that come out of these uh, op opportunities, like total abundance in this case. So basically, I think that's about it. So we've got this stage of uh, a service. Uh, we know there are issues with this, but it, we're getting to the point where we actually have a service that, that's available to the community. We, we know that there are issues with standards in this, in this area, so we're in the process of, of putting together um, a four-year programme now, which will start at the, in, in the, our next financial year, which begins on the 1st of July, uh, to, to actually bring um, some, some formality to this process. Uh, for example, with the, the annotation schemes, for example, as we say, we've got no community of practice about what we should actually use. There are other, other um, annotation schemes around, and I think Brian will talk about some more next, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and and so, so we're looking at um, how over the next four years we can actually set something up to, to, to standardise what we do in Australia in this space along the same way that we do it for the rest of the IMOS data collections.